Her name was Tekakwitha. Her mother was a Catholic Algonquin, her father a Mohawk chief. When she was four years old, her village was devastated by smallpox. Orphaned, she survived, but she was left weak, partially blind, and her face horribly scarred. When Jesuit missionaries arrived at her village, Tekakwitha saw a chance to learn more about the faith of her mother. When she was baptized, she took the name Kateri, Mohawk for Catherine. After her baptism, she became an outcast. Her family was angered that she embraced the religion of the invader. They called her Christian. Children taunted her and threw stones. Kateri was not disturbed. Her family threatened her with torture and death if she did not give up her new religion. Kateri left all that she knew behind and fled more than 200 miles through woods, rivers and swamps to a Catholic mission. There, Kateri spent her time in prayer, helping those in the village who were poor or sick. Against custom, she decided not to take a husband, becoming the first of her people to take a vow of perpetual virginity. to be. In the winter of 1680, when she was 24 years old, Kateri fell ill. For two months she lay, until finally on Wednesday of Holy Week, at three o'clock in the afternoon, she died. Her last words were, Jesus, I love you. And that's when it happened. Before all those gathered in the room, the ugly scars disappeared. Her face became radiant. That was just the beginning of the many extraordinary works that followed. Saint Kateri Tekakwitha, the most beautiful flower that ever bloomed among the Indians. Mm -hmm.